friends welcome to the 13th lecture in module 3. In this lecture we are going to talk about event tree analysis. This is 13th lecture in module 3 where we are focusing on risk assessment and reliability applications. In the last lecture we discussed about the fault tree analysis, the advantages, methodology and how one can easily find out the fault tree algorithm or logical tree algorithm by dividing the system into systems in series and parallel and one can find basically the failure probability of the whole system provided you know the complete details of occurrence of failure, rate of occurrence of failure, consequences and effects of each event like basic event, triggering event, initiating event etcetera in a given logical tree algorithm and try to find out the whole analysis using this. In the current lecture we will talk about another method of risk analysis using event tree. We already compared if you remember both the analysis and said one is deducive and one is on the forward direction. The event tree analysis is inducive algorithm goes on the forward direction. So, event tree is actually a representation of logical order. logical order of events leading to some condition of interest for a considered system. Generally we are looking forward for failure conditions. There are different states of the considered system because the state can have a multiple failure. So, a system can have a multiple failure we should say multiple modes of failure and hence there can be many conditions which we will be interested in. So, one can easily see that for different states considered of the system one should associate consequence of each state. So, each so it is important that each failure condition or let us say adverse condition should be also associated with its relative consequence that is very important. Okay. Now, event tree analysis slightly deviates from the fault tree in the following manner. Let us say event tree actually starts event tree starts from a basic initiating event. basic initiating event and then develops from that point onwards until all possible states with adverse consequences are reached develops until all possible states of adverse condition provoking adverse consequences are reached. 
the initiating event which actually is the starting point of the event tree may typically arise as top events from the fault tree analysis. The initiating event can can start from the top events from the fault tree analysis before constructing an event tree event definitions and logical values should be known event definitions and logical outcomes of the event should be known before event tree is started which are element of event tree analysis which are even elements of event tree analysis may have a discrete sample space. or a continuous sample space. Therefore, it is very interesting that even tree analysis can become complex which can be easily realized that for a given system if there are n number of let us say two state components then the total number of path is 2 power n which makes the event tree analysis more complex. Let us say if each component have m states, now we are talking about only two states. If each component has m states, then the total number of branches can be m power n because if there are two states is 2 power n because n is the number of components each component has two states therefore, 2 power n is the number of paths. If there are m states it can be n power n which will make the analysis further more complicated. Please pay attention to the figure shown on the screen now. Let us say the initiating event can be represented in two forms either the one set of events shown in the left hand side or the one shown in the right hand side from the initiating event one can keep on branching out and every information of all elements participating in the event tree or what we call components of event tree the total information should be available to us it can be derived from a discrete sample space or from a continuous sample space. To understand the consequences or effects of every event on the overall failure of the system which could be certainly a part of any logical tree may be FTA or ETA analysis. Let us talk more information on cause and consequence analysis. Cause consequence charts are another method of representing a combination of fault tree and event trees. So, cause consequence charts is an alternate method of representing 
the combination of fall tree and even trees. The interrelation between the fall tree and even tree becomes very important in such cases. The interrelation between fall tree and even tree becomes very important namely the top even for the fall tree top event of the fall tree which is called initiating event in case of event tree is represented by a rectangular gate. with output being event of yes or no values. Each of this output will lead to different set of consequences. Therefore, benefit of cons consequent chart is the main advantage of the cause consequence chart is fall tree need not be expanded in the presentation. Therefore, the overview of risk analysis is improved greatly. So, that is the advantage what you have in case of a cost consequence chart. A typical cost consequence chart is now shown on the screen now one can see here the consequences which has the series and parallel events that is p i and 1 minus p i depending upon what kind of element you are looking at. The output will lead to s or no variables ultimately will come to an event which can be now an example event of a fault tree. Alternatively people also look for decision trees. They are applied within the framework of decision theory. It is one of the basic framework of risk assessment. Because risk analysis serves the purpose of decision making, we all know that as a risk analysis. is actually originates from a decision making theory and in fact if you look at reliability decision making is inherently present towards engineering judgment.
Therefore, interestingly friends it is important to know that risk level in offshore industry should be predefined as per international practice. Why we say should be predefined because you estimate the risk present in the system it is compared with what we call acceptable risk and then you decide what action to be taken. So, the decision theory is applied when the risk present is compared with acceptable level. So, one need to actually define or predefine the acceptable level of risk in offshore industry. Of course, this is truly acceptable and truly standardized as per international practice. We already said that people define risk in offshore industry using a concept called LR, which is the risk is as low as reasonably practical. So, offshore industry can be identified as one of the industries where zero risk is not possible, but of course, you can always predefine the acceptable level of risk and then estimate the presence of risk in the given system, compare that with the acceptable level what you have predefined. Please understand you cannot define a risk subsequently later after you do the risk analysis. You got to predefine the acceptable level of risk, then do a risk analysis, compare that and think about either improvement or action taken, recommendations etcetera either to bring down the risk level or bring down the consequences or both. More interestingly the predefined risk level should be also declared in the public domain. Okay. It should also be approved by the competent authority. So, the predefined risk level is not a proprietary item or a royalty or the liberty of the offshore industry, it has to follow standard guidelines implemented by various international regulatory agencies, the company or the owner or the group of companies should declare the pre acceptable of risk in advance in the public domain, which should also seek an approval from the local government or local agency that the declared predefined risk level is acceptable as per the local government standards. Therefore, it is important to either to act on the risk assessment results or not to act is actually a decision making process. where decision theories are useful. So, one has got to really do decision trees in such cases.
therefore, you can say that decision trees are important part of risk assessment decision analysis is a framework for risk assessment and risk evaluation as well both so decision analysis is a framework for risk assessment and risk evaluation. So, please pay attention to a typical decision tree which is used in risk assessment. For example, you have a decision tree where you want to really say about uncertainty of a specific event, then take a decision, then you also decide about for example, what is the uncertainty in the specific event further coming forward and depending upon the uncertainty in the event, what would be the consequence in the utility what will happen because of uncertainty present in that specific event. So, one has keep on taking decisions at different levels, once the output from a decision tree may be yes or no, true or false, what may be the output coming out from the decision tree, one need to actually follow up in such a manner that what would be the consequence of those uncertainties involved in the event should be clearly marked and logically analyzed what we call as a decision tree for risk assessment. So, therefore, a typical decision tree is constructed as a consecutive rows of decision. followed by uncertain events as we just now saw in the figure. This reflects that the uncertain events have an outcome possible action which may follow from the decision reflects the fact that the uncertain outcome the uncertain outcome of the possible actions may follow from the decision At the end of the decision tree, consequences are assigned. In accordance with the decisions made, also depends on the outcomes of the uncertain events depending on the number of decisions and the action involved in the decision analysis decision trees are classified
their classification represents various types of decision analysis that are required. So, the classifications of decision tree represent also the type of analysis required it can range from the most simple ones to the most advanced one simple ones are called as prior decision analysis advanced are called as pre posterior analysis resulting from the decision tree which results in the outcome from the uncertain events or the decision made depending upon the regulatory issues which are predefined in the beginning of the analysis probability of different events that are represented in decision tree may be assessed. So, based on the uncertain events or the outcome of the decision analysis probabilities of different events that are represented in the decision tree analysis. or will be assessed. They can also be a part of event tree analysis or they can be even a part of reliability analysis because we are talking about probability of different events which lead to uncertainties which can amount to the failure therefore, it can be a part of reliability analysis as well or their combination therefore, a decision tree includes all aspects of the system that is very important therefore, your decision tree includes all aspects of the system component modeling in addition to leading towards decision making So, interestingly in this lecture friends we discussed about event tree analysis we have already compared event tree with fault tree in terms of its possible outcome we have also discussed about the importance of cause consequence charts in a logical tree analysis then we extended our discussion for interestingly the decision trees which follows under the framework of decision making. So, we all know that in offshore structure systems risks are predefined and should be declared in public domain and they should be audited and acceptable by the competent authority. So, all the time we always estimate the risk in a given system and try to compare that risk with that of the 
predefined acceptable level and state whether it is risk mitigated or risk controlled or risk is really going to cause concern for the society and for the plant. So, risk assessment is going to be a comparative tool in terms of decision making where decision theories are employed which is the most common practice in offshore structures because any risk assessed in a working plant in offshore industry need to be always compared with the threshold value or acceptable value of that risk which is predefined by various international regulatory agencies. You have got to always assess and evaluate risk in that manner and then recommend actions as a third party auditor to improve on the situation or let us say to control the adverse effects of risk produced in a given system. Thank you very much.